In the last video we were capturing small and medium ships, but now we're going after something bigger. For that we are going to use the Shiaku Sentinel because it can hold an absolutely insane amount of marines. While you can use a fleet of medium traders to get the same number of marines, that is just more micro to deal with and honestly bigger is just better. The Shiaku is expensive, costing a minimum of 10 million with over a million of that being the marines themselves, but luckily it doesn't need fancy equipment, tier 2 shields, or even weapons, although if you can afford it, definitely put them on. That is because even though it is the star of the show, it won't actually be the ship that we are going to be flying. Instead, we're going to be in a pulsar. The Shiaku's one job is to safely deliver the marines, but this tiny pulsar is the one that's going to be doing all the heavy lifting. We need something small, fast, and heavy hitting, and this little guy is perfect for that. Just try not to get shot, and it is very much a glass cannon. Now there are three different targets we need to focus on, which is why we have three different weapon systems. The missiles are there to destroy the surface elements, such as engines and turrets. The shard batteries for the drones and laser towers. Finally, we have the thermal disintegrators for damaging the hull. It will bypass the shields, but you will need the split vendetta expansion. If you do not have this, then replace them with plasma cannons. It will take longer, but it will still get the job done. We find a target on the map and issue the board command. The amount of marines you can assign to the boarding pods is determined by the target's maximum crew size. In this case, it is 83. If you put the turrets on the Shiaku, set the behavior to disable target, otherwise have it maintain distance. Set both boarding plans to very strong, as we want the pods to deploy right away and then start operation. Boarding teams, prepare for launch. Now we get back to our pulsar and fly over. First, you want to destroy all engines to keep the target from disengaging. I'm using heavy dumb fire Mark 1 missiles, which have a maximum range of 21 kilometers, although good luck hitting even a large freighter at that distance. They do the lowest damage of all heavy missiles, but it is also the cheapest, and a two missile salvo does just fine in destroying engines and turrets. Now that the target can't move, we engage any drones with our shard batteries. This freighter only had one, but make sure to check that they don't have more. Haladi freighters have a blind spot in front that looks like an oversized Death Star exhaust port. This is where you'll use those thermal disintegrators to damage the hull. This ship has another blind spot in the rear, but here it's just more fun. The Shiaku will attack the turrets, but if you want to help, just circle the ship firing salvos. Something hit us. Notice that I am not destroying the shield generators. The AI will sometimes get overzealous with their supporting fires, so letting the shield stay up will protect it from unnecessary hull damage. There should be one more turret right around here. And that's the last of the turrets. And there goes the boarding pods. I'm going to put more damage on the hull as they won't start the breach until it's at 90%. If any turrets are still operational, this is where they might shoot down some of the pods. However, I find that unless you are boarding destroyers, you might lose one or two pods, if any at all. That message means we've just started the breach. If you want to check, just right click and select board to see which stage you are at. The more damage the hull takes, the faster the breach will proceed, but I find that it's not worth the increased repair cost. We are just going to wait over here in case one of the turds decides to come back online.
Repair drone. Normally I would destroy the repair drones, but I'm going to let it go so you can see how bad the AI's aim is. Plus most of the work is done now, so it gives us something to look at. I know that plasma cannons aren't the best at hitting drones, but those are really bad shots. Some of them are even missing the freighter. Yep, there's a bit of waiting during these boarding actions, but better to let the marines make a hole than shooting at the hole yourself. Repairs on these big guys can get expensive. you'll see that they managed to repair one of the engines. The Shiaku should destroy any repaired modules, but keep an eye out just in case they don't. At least that explosion was pretty. Well, back to waiting. He missed again! Oh well. Maybe things are different in the future, but eat an asteroid doesn't really make me quiver in fear. Now if we could launch asteroids at each other instead of torpedoes just throw an asteroid at a station, that would do it. Oh look, he actually got it! Good for him. Or is the captain or her? No, I think the captains are her. Well, good for her. Another message means we've moved to phase three. We can check again just to make sure. Striking. I need an update. Open fire. They are now going to deploy laser turrets, but we are not going to destroy them. If we do, they will just deploy more, but since the freighter isn't moving, the towers are actually blocking the docking bay. Just move a little bit until they lose line of sight. Guess what we're going to do now? Yep. Wait. Now some of you may have noticed that this boarding operation actually involves three ships. I've brought along an elite vanguard to help distract the towers. That ship actually has the highest maneuverability of all the fighters, so it should be able to dodge those beams no problem. That ship is so worthless. Reinforcements arriving. More waiting, but this is the last phase, so not too much longer. With the ship ours, we can now take care of those laser towers. It's got me targeted, so I'm just going to back up to lose line of sight. Just wait until they start shooting the freighter, then fly right up next to them and open up with your shards. Tower AI is definitely not the best. Last step is to change your marines to service crew so they can get those engines back online and assign a captain. Don't forget to confirm changes. I've made that mistake before and got confused why nothing was happening. Now I ran this boarding operation five times looking for this bug. The marines will not start the breach until all pods are attached to the hull. Sometimes the pathfinding will derp out and you'll get stuck. Luckily, there's an easy fix for this. Brutal. And that's how you capture these bigger ships for fun and profit. We're at the end of the video, but I'd like to point out this bridge. We have a captain and crew and a marine that aren't really doing anything. Nothing here serves any gameplay purpose. But Egosoft, a small company with like 20 employees, 
took the time to design this purely for immersion. And I really like that, when developers do these little things like this. I don't know, I just felt like sharing that. Yeah, either way. But before you go, if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please give a click to all the good buttons at the bottom so that more people can see it. Until next time, fly safe.